So, thank you so much, sir, for these wonderful words. Now, I'm inviting Mr. Gopal Krishna Mahesh from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, for the, giving the next presentation. With all my due respect to the delegates and dignitaries present here, good morning, Gujarat. Okay, this justifies the tagline, Vibrant Gujarat, of course. My name is Gopala Krishna Mahesh, and I'm from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. It's, called, it's a small city called Manchester of South India. And uh, I have three people along with me who will be presenting my paper presentation today along with me. It's three more people, very important people, Bixby, Alexa, and Siri. They are standing right next to me, and they also want to talk to you. This justifies the topic for the day. It's artificial intelligence and the future of accountancy. So what is artificial intelligence? It is the cognitive skills and, the, uh, and the, uh, what to say, it's more of like a human brain in a computer. They have the problem solving capacities of a human in a computer. It's going to solve all this. It's going to provide solutions to all the problems, just like the way a brain works. This is the basic concept of artificial, so artificial intelligence. So what it is going to have an impact in our sector. So we, we travel a little time back because uh, what the current scenario says is that all Arabic and Roman numerals will be changed to Bixby and Alexa numerals. So how this is going to happen? So when we travel a little back, during the ancient age, there was very limited amount of information. It was said that the total amount of information that was present was doubling every 1,500 years once. That is, if there's an information today, there's a, this much amount of information today, it will double only after 1,500 years. And when man found, uh, man learned how to read and write, it doubled every 250 years once. And when, during the age of science, when he, uh, when he registered the science as a subject, it doubled every 25 years once. And during this age, the age of information and technology, it's doubling every year. By this time next year, we'll be having double the information that was there today. So what this is going to do to artificial intelligence? Because when if data is doubling at this pace rate, it would take 25 years for a student to complete his BCom degree. Because there's so much amount of information that is bombarded and which he has to absorb. It is practically not possible in today's world. And that is where AI comes into play. You don't have to go through everything. Everything is there right at the click of the button. You just have to know how to use it. That is the whole concept of AI. So there's one thing our profession is bounded to because we are the pioneers of using AI in our profession. We have uh, introduced AI in our profession right from the early age. It's very simple. It's the basic equipment that we have. It's the calculator. It is the most simplest form of artificial intelligence which gives you solution for every complex problem that we all face in our exams. But the answer depends on the out output and input that you provide. The output is based on the input that you provide. If you're going to provide a very wrong input, the output is also going to be wrong. That's the whole concept of AI. So what next? What is going to be the way forward? Before we get into our profession, let's just have a brief outlook all other professions. Technology advancement in the field of production. Our production is going to go many field times increase because of artificial intelligence. We can go for double the production hours with artificial intelligence, which actually stabilizes the optimum utilization of raw materials. In the field of medical, we can have biosensors and microchips, which can scan the whole entire body and which can also boost the efficiency of organs within us. In the field of military, we can do weapon testing, weapon assessment, and the impact of it on our society without even having a battlefield. And autonomous driving, as we all know, it is in the very advanced stage in the Western countries, and we, uh, we India, are adopting it at a very fast rate. And in food industry, we have AI, whereby we are manufacturing the food without manual intervention. Now, that is a very giant leap forward. And robotic arms, as we all know, it's all present in all multinationals where the entire production is carried on by robotics. So coming to the elephant of the room, it's impact of AI in field of accounting, auditing, and finance. So all these days, we have been having a, a traditional system of accounting where we account for salaries, bonus, wages, employee benefit expenses. Uh, we have a concept called human resource accounting. Now, this is entirely going to change. We are going to shift from human resource accounting to material resource accounting. Yes, you heard it right. It's from HRA to MRA. Because 
uh, as the labor force decreases, we'll be having a lot of machineries put into production, which is going to take care of the service sector as well as the manufacturing sector. So we are not going to have an increased expenditure on salaries, but we'll have an increased expenditure on depreciation. We'll not be having increased expenditure on employee benefit expenses. We'll be having increased expenditure on uh, wear and tear expenses. That is how we are going to see the shift in our territory. Uh, and we also know that our share of accountants, we are supposed to maintain the data of our client for a period of eight years. Now, this is not possible in today's world, and that is why our offices are filled with files, a lot of files. Even we may not have place to sit, but our files have places to sit in our office. So this is what is going to change. When you have cloud computing with AI, you can not just store eight years, but you can have 800 years of your client data. This is where AI comes into play in our profession. And all these days we have been learning about labor laws, such as employ, uh, labor laws, which is totally focused on uh, manual and uh, fo focused on human resource. Now this is going to change. We have to start studying about cyber laws, IT governance, and e-waste compliance, because that is going to be the future. So this answers, so this uh, will arise a question in your mind. If everything is going to shift to material, then what is going to happen to our lives? Are we going to lose our jobs? This is the biggest question today. It's a very debatable question, but I'm here to decode the myth. Let me say you, we are not going to lose our jobs. This is firm and final. We are not going to lose our jobs. Instead, AI is going to make us more segmented, more stratified, more uh, diplomatic, and more diversified in our profession. Because when there's an artificial intelligence which has the capability of doing each and every task, we as professionals, we have to equip ourselves to overpower that computer. We are the creators of the computer, and we must have the utmost control of it in our hands. So where this will begin? This will begin right from the educational institution, where they will start providing, and they will start providing quality education, which will make the mankind more diplomatic. This is not this will only eradicate a small part of the semi-literate blue-collar jobs. We are going, we will be having more increase of white-collar jobs. So this does not mean that everybody is going to get success out of this. The labor portion, the labor portion who are doing the monotonous task will actually suffer. So this is where the uh, evolution theory comes into force. What the evolution theory says is that mankind will do anything and everything for his survival. That is the basic instinct of survival. So what happens is, when I'm going to lose my job, I'll make sure I study something else, I'll equip myself with some other skills, so that I can go further for my survival. We have a real life example for this. A decade ago, they said ATMs are going to completely change the way our banking system goes. The, there was a designation called teller in bank. Uh, so they said this ATM is going to replace the teller. So basically, the teller is going to lose his job. But today, did you see that teller has lost his job, but he is not, he's not out of the bank. He is in the bank. He's doing some other job. That is the way we are going to move forward. Even though we lose our current job, the current monotonous job for the labor force I'm talking about, if they're going to lose it, they will find some other alternative avenue. That is how we proceed further. And there's also one IIT research analysis, which is called the 95% versus the 5%. So what this is all about is 95% of the population will adopt technology and 5% of the population will not adopt. This 5% of the population is the person who will suffer because they, that could be a lot of uh, uh, factors which they are not able to cope up with technology. When you're able to cope up with technology, that is the day your uh, growth is going to start. So my point here today is artificial intelligence is a tool and not a threat for our profession in, uh, in focus because when you have the focus, when you have the entire power of computer in, within yourself, that is the day your growth is going to start. And uh, what our AI is going to do in our profession is, we are not going to go based on judgmental basis of audit. We are going to go based on systematic basis. Uh, for example, when you take an audit sample selection, uh, we just take based on our mental decisions, mind decisions that we choose the samples. But when AI is there, it will automatically point out the abnormalities in, our, in your sample. So you can easily pick out the abnormalities and go for the audit in detail for it. So there is one equation that I want you to study. Manpower plus technology equal to superpower. 
I would like all of you to repeat this. Manpower plus technology is equal to superpower. Yes, I will explain this. When does the best integration of manpower along with the present day technology, that is the day your life is going to go to the next leap. Not just your life, it's going to be for the country also. Because there is no other profession without technology. Technology has become a part of our life. Uh, take it any field, medical, science, commerce, we can't live without technology. So what we have to do is, we have to shape the technology for our life. We have to shape it the way we require for our profession. And that is where AI comes into force. AI is a tool which can be uh, shaped the way you want. It is not, it is not uh, general specific, it is customer specific, it is profession specific. That is where AI helps as a tool in our hand to grow leaps and boundaries. Now on a lighter note, I will tell you the day when AI is completely developed. There's a test for it. So what test is that? You all have your phones. You can actually open Bixby, Alexa, Siri, and you can propose it. The day it accepts you, that is the day AI is completely developed. Because when it is able to take decisions about yourself, that day it will be, we can be assured that AI can take decisions about the entire profession itself. Thank you for this opportunity. Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. Gopal Krishna. Thank you, Mahesh. It's, uh, it's a great presentation. Thanks for that. Um, Mahesh talked about uh, how the future profession is changing in terms of our uh, roles and jobs are changing, right? So I just wanted to give some anecdote to you on that perspective. Um, there was a recent uh, publication from one of the consulting firms who talk about how the job profiles are going to change in the next five, six years uh, because of the application of technology. So it, it gave some, uh, quoted some numbers in there. It says by 2022, about uh, one in 10 workers would be employed in a job which does not even exist today, right? It's not very surprising. If you look back at the type of jobs we have been having 100 years back, most of them probably doesn't even exist today, right? It goes on to give some more information around about 30 to 40 percent of um, the type of jobs that we have uh, or the type of job descriptions that we have are going to be completely redefined by 2025. It keeps on saying that uh, a typical uh, mid-tier process-oriented company would have about 900 processes or so. Uh, by 2025, about 80 to 90 percent of these processes are going to get automated completely which means about 110 to 140 people or full-time employees are going to lose their jobs to robots, right? And it's coming very fast at us. Now, do you see that as an opportunity or the threat? And the decision is I clearly is upon to you. As Mahesh clearly explained it out, uh, what's happening with this technology is, by technology itself is pretty dumb if you don't have the intelligentsia, the human intelligentsia behind it, right? The purpose of this technology is to make sure any routine, non-judgmental processes are done by a machine, so you can spend your time on areas which are more interesting, right? Where you can do the decide part of the things. So if you see the evolution of artificial intelligence that's happening right now, so we start with some basic robotics process automation, which basically pretty much that takes away the do part of the job from the human beings. For example, a bot which does the um, it raises the PO systems from the purchase orders from the emails, right? Just takes the do away part of the job from you. Then comes simple machine learning, which takes the think part of the job away from you, right? For example, uh, an insurance company looks at its various examples um, as to how it processes its insurance claims, and if you feed that uh, to that software a uh, series of data, and then it comes and tells you these are the uh, possible outcomes that can have with it. So it takes away the think part of the job out of it. Then comes more cognitive technology, which takes the uh, analyze part of the job out of you. And then finally, where we are moving through artificial intelligence, machine learning, and everything is the analyze part of the data. The decide part of the data is taken out from you as well. Right? So social media, the, the unstructured data, structured data, which is all out there, you process that, you take your decisions, and make your business decisions. So that's the evolution that we see over a period of time. I will just put it back into the context of our accounting, how its artificial intelligence is helping us today. 
So many of you know about this new leasing standards coming out, this IFRS 16, and that's actually having a very pervasive impact uh, to, the, to the accounting profession as to how these uh, leases, uh, these uh, long-term leases are being accounted for, which are all coming onto balance sheet. So OCR technology or optical character reader tools are being applied to analyze thousands and millions of contracts, which reads that in no time and summarizes the key elements for yourself. And what the accounting standards uh, with the same OCR technology with machine learning does is it takes the key attributes from these contracts and, uh, and uh, plugs that to the relevant accounting positions. So for the various uh, contract terms, what is the corresponding accounting uh, position that could be taken, the decide part of it, or at least a whole forum of things are laid across to the accountant based on which they can take the decision. So again, the manual part, the routine part, the non-judgmental part is taken out. So the accountants today can spend more time on the decision-making part of it. So I just wanted to put that context in there. Before we go to our next presenter, I think it's um, Lipika. Lipika.